sent to heal and try to part, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sat at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, <coughs> and bring us to the everlasting life. Let us pray. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot that plant, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love. A time to hate. A time of war. And a time of peace. What advantages has the worker from his toil? I've considered the task which God has appointed for men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts without men's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognized that there's nothing better than to be glad and to do well during life. For every man, moreover, to eat and drink and to enjoy the fruit of all is his labor, is a gift of God. The word of the Lord.
Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. <clears throat> God is my shepherd, so nothing I shall want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. <clears throat> Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. <clears throat> Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Is it possible that he who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for the sake of us, all will not grant us all things besides? Who shall bring a charge against God's chosen ones? God who justifies? Who shall condemn them? Christ Jesus, who died, or rather was raised up, 
who is at the right hand of God and who intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Trial or distress or persecution or hunger or nakedness or danger or the sword? Yet in all this, we are more than conquerors because of him who has loved us. For I am certain that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, neither the present or the future, nor powers, neither height nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God that came to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On one occasion, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise for what you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest children. Father, it is true. You have graciously willed it so everything has been given over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulder and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, on December 4th this year, many of us did not wake up to hear good news. We woke up to hear the passing of our beloved mother, grandmother, a friend, a parishioner, mother-in-law, Becky Bazako. Life, as we all know, is goodbye. Life is hello. 54 years ago, we welcomed Becky to this earth. Today, we meet sadly to say goodbye to her. By saying goodbye to her today began 54 years ago. According to Jane Teller, for the moment we are born, 
we begin to die. So as we gather to bid Becky a farewell, I want to welcome all of you to this church and to extend my condolences and that of our parish to Becky's family, especially her children, Alex, Charlie, Jack, Peyton, and Haley. We appreciate the great work your mother did for humanity, and we pray that the good Lord will reward her and grant her eternal rest in his kingdom. We are also praying for you as you go through these challenging times. We ask God to strengthen and to console you. My dear friends in Christ, if there is ever a time when one needs a deep and abiding faith in God, it is on the occasion of the funeral of a loved one. Because there is such a stark sense of finality about death that it is easy to drift into a hopeless state and begin to think that death is the end of everything. As we grieve Becky's passing, the church invites all of us to affirm our faith in the resurrection. Our belief in the resurrection gives meaning to our lives as Christians and not unbelievers. For those who do not believe in the resurrection, death is the end of the road of life. For them, life is meaningless and purposeless. For us Christians, Death is not the end of life because we believe in the resurrection. And the basis of this belief is the resurrection of Christ. Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live forever. Therefore, death is the gateway to another and a better life in the kingdom of heaven. As John Milton will put it, death is the golden key that opens the palace of eternity. We heard from the first reading that for everything, there is a season, a time for everything under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Solomon's words ring through in our ears, especially today. For Becky, there was a time to be born and a time to die. She was born on January 2nd, 1967. 
and she died on December 4th, 2021. So God granted her 54 years of earthly life, 1967 to 2021, was her time to live, work, love, give, struggle, and serve her maker. During the 54 years that she lived in this world, Becky also interacted in many ways with us, some as children, others in-laws, grandchildren, friends, colleagues, relatives, and parishioners. During these years, she was a mother to everyone and loved everyone, regardless of one's background. Yesterday, my secretary described her like a mother hen who gathers her chicks under her wings. She taught for 13 years as a teacher and her students saw her not only as their teacher but also as a mother. I was told she taught at our school, which is no more, very sad. And I was told she and Bob, who later became her in-law, sister-in-law, right, started the Assumption School PTO. In short, she was a beautiful gift to the world. And if you look at this church, it is full. I've been here for almost seven years. This is the first time I have seen this church full for a funeral mass. So it tells us the kind of person Becky was. But now all our interactions with her are over. Suddenly, she had disappeared from our midst. At the moment, her remains lie quiet, still, and motionless. Her passing should be a reminder to us that death is inescapable and inevitable. We may reach the biblical age of 70 and even live much older, but what is certain is that we shall die one day. So while on this earth, we must do the will of God by loving him and our fellow human being. This is Becky's message to all of us. She lived as a Christian. She believed that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. She received the body of Christ and the anointing of the sick. When I visited her, at the Methodist Hospital before I left for Ghana. And she and I had a long talk. Becky fought the good fight. She finished the race and she kept her faith. She never allowed her sickness her pains and suffering to separate her from Christ's love.
So for me, what awaits her is the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award her on that day. And for her children, just as your mother did not allow her sickness, pain, and suffering to separate her from Christ's love, you must not let her passing separate you from Christ's love. As in Paul tells us in the second reading, Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trials or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come no powers, no height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. These words of St. Paul should console and comfort you. Nothing in this world should separate all of us from Christ's love. Jesus also in the Gospel reading invites us to come to him with our burdens, weariness, sorrows, pains, and tears, and he will give us rest. Today we are celebrating Becky's life. She lived as a Christian and she died as a Christian. There is this communion song I, I love. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not die. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him. And I will raise him up. And I will raise him up. And I will raise him Upon the last day. These are the words of Jesus. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall not thirst. And I will raise that person up on the last day. We believe that Becky received that bread of life. We believed that she lived as a Christian. We believed that she loved everyone regardless of one's color, one's race, one's ethnicity. So we believe that one day Jesus will raise her up. We pray that God in his infinite mercy will overlook whatever Becky did in this life that did not please him and give her a place of repose and peace in his kingdom.
For back he who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have reward for their goodness. We pray to the Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our sister Becky, that she may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Thank you. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave it thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice, my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of
Jaime Chirosan, in a death like this, may also be one within a death resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all that have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, a spouse, who teaches, with the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we be buried before us to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And with him had a O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, O ever and ever.
So it's time for communion. The Catholic Church, the communion is meant for only Catholics. So if you are not a Catholic, you can still join the live with your hands and your shoulders.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of the body, food for the journey, mercy for the God, that strengthened by this, our sister, Becky Bazako, may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. this one. <laughs> Mom actually used to always tease the boys in our family that the girls were a little bit tougher, <laughs> so I got to do this thing, uh, which we found to be pretty true with Rory and Sailor. But um, first, thank you all for being here. This is incredible. Um, we can't express how much Mom would love this. Uh, the power of her plight to survive in order to protect all of us will forever be awe-inspiring. It has been an extremely long couple of years with endless doctor appointments and medications for her and my stepdad that they championed through, rarely if ever complaining, all while compelling the most selfless acts of still caretaking for their family and friends. Nearly six weeks ago, mom let us know she was rapidly approaching the end of her life. In true fashion, she hung on for exactly 40 more days to have the opportunity for her family and lifelong friends to give her a proper see you later and a love send off. And of course, to have Melissa fix up her hair one more time, laugh at their 30 year old jokes with Mary, Aaron, Terry, Dee Dee, Clothier, and McGinn, and so many more. For Bridget to come in and kind of boss us around a little, exactly how mom would do to your family. Uh, to pick on Chris and Tim with Brooke. And Aunt Shelley, Aunt Barb, Aunt Teresa, Andrea, Jackie Spellman, and so many more who are in the house every single day doing anything and everything imaginable, helping her host her last Thanksgiving and getting her home and family prepared for her passing. She suffered through 40 additional bonus days of life to ensure everyone else in her world was taken care of. She chose to pass on to her eternal life on the single night that none, not one of us, children or grandchildren, were in her home with her. Mom, we want you to know we will be okay. You have possessed more than enough strength for all of us, and it is our turn to be strong for you. We are eternally grateful you no longer have to spend another single moment in any pain and suffering. Within the last few weeks, it has been incredible to listen to stories of mom growing up, looking at photos, and witnessing her entire community from near and far come visit. She has built the most incredible relationships due to how she valued people. She embraced people for who they were, free of judgment, and wanted to shed infinite amounts of grace and love on them. As most of you know, she always had an extra bed made for whoever needed to stay the night, or a couple years, right, Willie? I wouldn't even be able to put a number on how many times we were stopped in public by one of mom's previous students nearly 20 years after she taught them, who would always say the most incredible stories of her and tell us how she made them feel so loved and at home in their first grade classroom. And they would typically say that mom was still their favorite teacher all through their education. Mom would still embrace them the same way I'm sure she did as when they were six years old. It was always a treasure for us to get to talk to mom's more current work friends as well and with no prompting at all, they would always say something along the lines of how mom and her work sister, Amy, would walk into these large corporations to pitch something, but contrary to their competitors, they'd pack them little gift bags or snacks and knickknacks and typically just want to talk about their new clients' families, which would often turn into mom trying to compare their children's athletic accolades with ours, as she was so proud watching Wooder Granger Athletics as if we were competing in the Olympics. She has been so successful in her life 
because of her genuine love for others. If you've ever been to our home, I'm certain you've had the opportunity to feel her love as you were going to sit at her table and have a plate of food, whether you were hungry or not, and she was probably going to send you with a tub of leftovers too. Mom, you loved your grandchildren more than life itself. We are so lucky to have so many beautiful babies in our growing family to hug and to hold. Our hearts are broken, but filled with your infinite amounts of love that we are blessed to get to pass on to people in each of our own individual lives, only hoping that we can make people feel as loved as you've made all of us feel. I'm going to read a quick one. To those I love and to those who love me, when I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with tears. Be thankful for our many years. I gave to you my love. You can only guess how much you gave to me in happiness. I thank you for the love you each have shown, but now it's time I traveled alone. So grieve a while for me, if grieve you must. Then let your grief be comforted by trust. It's only a time, it's only for a time that we must part. So bless the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. So if you need me, call me and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I'll be near. And if you listen to your heart, you'll hear. All my love around you, soft and clear. And then when you must come this way, I'll greet you with a smile and hug and say, welcome home. You're with us always, Mom. We love you. Thank you. 